you know, I was going to hold off. I was going to hold off until tomorrow because I'm about to film a mock draft. I was going to dive into the Miles Sanders propaganda hyperbole. The news just dropped about an hour ago that Miles Sanders all of a sudden is week to week with a lower body injury. Y'all know no one has bought more tickets to the Miles Sanders train, the hype train, the RB1, the top five fantasy season that was about to come out of Booby Sanders' brazier in 2020. I anointed him my RB6 like three months ago, and I have not changed course since. Had they brought in a veteran, maybe I would have. We want to talk about the running back by committee, but they have, none no they have done nothing to follow their actions. Now, we all of a sudden hear this report about the injury. Miles Sanders week to week. We immediately get reports from people that have sources in the Eagles camp about he's going to be fine. We're just being precautious. He'll be good to go for week one. There are a few things to talk about here. There's obviously the situation in Philadelphia. Like, what do we do with the running back core in terms of, like, really drafting in fantasy? Do we move Miles Sanders down? Do we keep him here? What are we doing? One, for all y'all that already drafted your redraft teams, let this be a lesson to y'all why you never, ever, ever draft this early in the summer. Always as close to the beginning of the season as possible. We want to talk about, about the Philly backfield. But the bigger picture here, I think the bigger lesson to learn is about injuries and injury optimism, okay? I will roll this into your faces, into a little blunt and smoke it, secondhand smoke right up your noses for the next three to five years. The single biggest advantage you can have in fantasy football, I promise you, it's not going late round quarterback, it's not taking running backs early on in the draft, it's not fading Todd Gurley. The single biggest advantage is not buying into injury optimism, okay? When someone comes out and just says, he's fine, this is precautious, we don't have to worry about the injury, he'll be ready to roll week one, I'm here to tell you that that is fake news. This does not mean that I'm fading Miles Sanders right now. This does not mean that Miles Sanders will not be healthy for week one. What I'm saying is do not take that per verbatim, whatever that fucking term is, because I want to bring up this tweet that I tweeted out, right? After I saw the news, I saw everyone's like, oh, he's good to go, he's fine, don't worry about it. Here are the list of players... Last year, mid-August, that suffered injuries and were week to week, considered week to week at August 15th or later, every one of these guys had injuries that were not considered to be serious and assuredly were going to be ready for week one. Cam Newton, Nikhil Harry, Jordan Reed, Darius Geis, Anthony Miller, Kiki QT. How did those seasons turn out for them? Almost all of them missed the majority of the season with, with injuries. And I had some people pushing back. So we had, this is not a list of all the players that suffered week-to-week -week injuries. I was like, okay, so list some of them and we'll, we'll, we'll dive a little bit deeper into it. Someone listed Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry's calf strain happened in July. He was back on the football field by mid-August. If Miles Sanders can come back, if he's truly healthy, he'll be back at practice within a couple of weeks. One of the underrated parts of this season is the fact that the kickoff is not till September 10th. That Thursday night football. So football Sunday is not until the 13th. Normally, we have the first week of the first weekend of September is Labor Day and football kicks off that week. We have an extra week before the NFL season actually happens, which is good news for a guy like Miles Sanders whose injury is considered week to week. So we had, oh, that's not a full list at all. Amari Cooper, Sterling Shepard, Odell Beckham, Keenan Allen, Mike Evans, okay? List of some guys that were also injured throughout the season. Sterling Shepard on that list missed six of the first Giants' 10 games. Odell Beckham was terrible last year, and it was because of the sports hernia surgery, the sports hernia injury that he manifested last summer and that he had surgery on afterwards. So that's two for two. Mike Evans was back at full practice in August. Amari Cooper, wildly inconsistent, finishing with a mediocre year in fantasy, and he was on and off of the injury report, which is probably why. Guys, like, I'm not a doctor, but I've learned a lot from the dudes within fantasy because we have context behind the injuries. When I say injury optimism, we, could lit we literally have timetables. We have science of how long these injuries should take to recover from. I never, ever, and this is the one takeaway I want you to get here. I never, ever say players are injury prone. They're not. But if you step on the football field at less than 100%, your chances of getting re-injured are exponential compared to everyone else who is at full health, okay? So the point being is here, if you suffer an injury that is a three-week timetable to return, and you step on the field, 
the football field to play an NFL game at 1.6 weeks, right? One week and three days into that next week, but you needed three weeks to fully recover, your chance of getting re-injured is not high because you're an injury-prone player. It's high because you are already putting yourself at risk. This is a violent fucking sport, and now you're less than 100%. So between re-injuring whatever you injured in the first place or having other muscles or joints or ligaments, having to compensate for that injury that you originally suffered just gives you a much higher rate of re-injury, okay? So the point being here is, for the 72nd time, the point being here, we don't want to find injuries because they will find you, okay? If Miles Sanders is back at practice before the season kicks off and he gets a few full practices in, I'm back on board. I'm fine, okay? But for now, he's going to be moving down my rankings in every format, okay? Because the re-injury risk is going to be there. We don't, know, actually, we don't actually know the context of the injury. So if it comes out and it's you know something very, very minor, I'll ask Dr. Morse about it. I'll ask Edwin over at uh, Fantasy Points about it, and we'll get more context behind it. But that's the point. Do not shake off an injury just because some fucking beat reporter who saw a guy in shorts says he looks fine. He's 100% ready to roll. That's not how this shit works. Coaches don't want to give you all these specifics. Coaches are, coaches are the ones that are injury optimistic, right? They say this shit, and then none of those guys are ever ready for week one, or they re-injure themselves very quickly into the season. So for right now, Miles Sanders will be moving down my draft board, okay? Doesn't mean he's off my board. As we move closer to the season, we'll see the reports. We'll, th- we'll see how things progress. If you want to see my actual rankings, you'll have to cop the draft guide, which I'll throw up the board really quickly. I don't want to like plug too much into this short video, but Monkey Knife Fight sponsors our draft guide this year, so you can get everything within the draft guide for $10 by depositing on monkeyknifefight.com using the promo code BDGE. So go to their website, deposit 10 using the promo code BDGE, play a game of $2 or more on their website, and you will get email access to my draft guide. I will have to move Miles Sanders out of the must draft list article for the round one player. And I will substitute someone else in there by the end of the weekend. I promise you for that. So Miles Sanders, the the other the other part of this that kind of stinks is Boston Scott's also been out of training camp with some sort of lower body injury, which means Sanders and Boston Scott have been out. The problem exists now where I said all, all, all off season. The reason I love Miles Sanders is because he was in a prime opportunity to get 75% of the touches in the backfield. If they signed a veteran, even a veteran that I didn't like, even like Devonta Freeman at this point, it would make me pull back a little bit on Miles Sanders because I don't think Freeman is good at all. I think he's completely washed. And I think Sanders is a thousand times better of running back at this point, but it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what Doug Peterson is going to do. If there is another head in that backfield that can compete in some sort of way, fashion for touches, that's what's going to happen. So now that Sanders and Boston Scott are both gone, for at least a little bit of time, a week, two weeks, whatever, there's a very good chance that they sign a veteran running back. And that means that that veteran running back is probably going to make the team. And that in itself is the long-term picture of why Sanders is probably going to drop in the rankings. So it's a twofer. There can be positive. There can be negative. It's something that we're going to have to monitor when it comes to the reports. Um, I think it makes Boston Scott a little bit more enticing if he can get back to practice within the next week or two. I think he was always like a sneaky good upside play later on in drafts because Miles Sanders can eat, but so can Boston Scott. We saw it at the end of last year. They were both averaging like five or six targets a game, so I think they could both be very involved in the offense. It really fucking stinks, bro. It really stinks because I was buying in on everything Sanders. Every report at a training camp, every report the entire summer is about how much they wanted to feed Miles Sanders from Doug Peterson to Deuce Staley. Deuce Staley. Like, I'm pretty sure he's trying to wife Miles Sanders up because he cannot stop talking about this dude. So I'm just getting to the point where I'm like, okay, it's like, slow your fucking roll because now everybody likes Miles Sanders. But they're talking about lining him up in the slot. They're talking about lining him up out wide and just how much damage they could do with him in the receiving game. So Sanders was just set up for a monster fucking year. And guys, again, I'm not completely off Miles Sanders, but be very, very tuned in to what the actual injury is. Be very tuned in to what the timetable return for it is. And be very tuned into whether or not he can get back on the field before the season kicks off. That is my concern with Sanders. You have this undrafted free agent from Cincinnati, this kid, Michael Warren, who I actually really liked coming out of college, but he went undrafted. Uh, not exactly the fastest mover. We didn't get a combine time, I don't believe. Or if we did, it was really slow. But he, he was a fun player to watch in, in, uh, in Cincinnati. So I think he's probably worth a late round flyer in dynasty leagues if he's not already picked up for your teams. Boston Scott is definitely a buy. Uh, in, in terms of dynasty, this does nothing to Miles Sanders' rankings for me, okay? This is a redraft problem for right now. So move your league back as far as you possibly can and cite this as an example why you need to do it. Miles Sanders still 
borderline RB1 conversation for now. If we continue to get good news, he will go back to around where I wanted him. If, I don't know, if we get zero practice time out of him between now and week one, I'm going to be weary about drafting him, guys. And I'm not being fucking biased because like, you, like you've like you been following me all summer, he has been my favorite, like not top tier elite talent running back who can legitimately put up some sort of elite fantasy numbers. So this is not me being like, yeah, like I, I never wanted Sanders. So this is me fucking showboating about how you were wrong if you picked him. This is me being completely unbiased, trying to give you the best advice that I could possibly give based on my experiences and talking with people within the industry that actually know things about injuries. Okay. So that is my hopefully unbiased point of view. That's going to wrap up this quick video. I just want to get something out there because I've been tagged about seven bajillion times on Twitter, which means you guys wanted a video from Nicholas. And this is BDGE fantasy football. I don't think I actually uh, introduced myself or the brand or whatever. There's probably a lot of new heads in here because these videos tend to do a lot of numbers when it's breaking news. Everything I just said was completely right off the top of the dome. So I apologize if anything I said in there was wrong or inaccurate, but I only dropped big facts. So nothing was fucking inaccurate. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. If you enjoyed, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new, because we're doing a mock draft tomorrow. I'll talk more about where I'll draft Miles Sanders, I guess, in a real situation right now. Otherwise, I love you and I'll see you later.